All right, folks, this one is a by popular demand. I've had a bunch of people ask me to do this one after I did the smaller version. Today we're looking at the Energizer 600 watt PPS 700 power station. Let's check it out. All right, everybody, welcome back. So about a week or so, or maybe two weeks ago, I reviewed the Energizer power station. And I was really impressed with it. And as a matter of fact, that very power station is powering my lights in here right now. I have it down on the floor there, and my USB lights are plugged in. So I've been using it quite a bit, and I've been very impressed with the run times on it and the amount of power it puts out, because these lights are fairly bright and suck down a lot of power. So I've been very, very impressed with its use so far. This thing here I've been using for about a week now. What I did was, obviously not in this video, but in other videos I've been using it to power my lights. And it's the same performance. So all in all, i got to say, Energizer has some great quality portable power stations. This comes with a ton of features. Very nice clean interface. Very minimal and non-intrusive design. It's got the LifePo 4 batteries. So you're going to have a lot of charges out of this. Like you can get up to, I believe, 2,000 full charges or cycles on this. In other words, you can discharge this 2,000 times and recharge it before the batteries go bad. So you got a good, good long start there. Um, something like that will last you a good long time. Its battery management system has protection for overcharging, so you know all of your electronics are safe. It's got a 620 watt hour capacity. That is a whole lot of watts. And a lot of different charging options, like wall sockets, cigarette lighter sockets. You can do a 100, power, 100 watt panel, which we will use on this. I want to try that out. Um, and you can connect all sorts of different stuff to this. And you can run nine of these outputs at the same time, as long as you're not going over 600 watts. And you'll be able to power a ton of stuff. Now, I know right off the bat people are going to tell me, oh, I could build something like that cheaper in, you know, in, in an ammo can. And heck, I've done it. I've done these on the video. I've done videos for that on the channel. Uh, however, the point with this is for people who can't do it, or maybe don't have the tools to do it, or don't have the understanding to do it, or just want an extra power station. You know, if I wasn't reviewing these and getting these for review, believe me, I'd probably buy a good one. I'd probably buy a you know two thousand or one thousand watt one just to have around because it's handy to have. They're very portable, easy to grab this and go. So I would definitely buy one, um, even if I already had some other stuff. You know, I have a full wall of solar on that side of my garage there uh, with an easy three to 4,000 watts of power. And, you know, I still have these because they're portable. They're easy to use. They're great for ham radio operators. You know, you do have a pure sine wave inverter in here, so if you wanted to plug in a power supply, you could. But even better than that, you can plug this thing straight in with 12 volts and be powering your radio. So definitely... Neat little system, and it does have a regulated 12-volt DC output, so you won't be messing around with voltages all over the place when you're doing that. Now, I did mention it's easy to carry. The weight on this is about 12 pounds. It has a very unique handle design. Um, one of the things I like about this is you can get a grip under there, pick it up, and carry it. No problem. Some of them, you know, I've had some that had leather on top and short little low handles because they're trying to look slick and whatever, and I'll tell you, they're harder to carry. This is very simple to carry. I would say in a car bug out kit, you know, in a vehicle, definitely the way to go. Another nice thing on this is the readout. I'm just going to turn on the DC for now. It's going to show you how many watts and volts you're pulling. It's going to show you when you're recharging about how much you have to recharge. And we are going to test this out with some stuff today and see just uh, how much this thing puts out. But I wanted to really give you a quick little look at it because a lot of people sent me emails or messaged me on that video saying, hey, Test the PS PPS 700. I kind of like, all right, all right. So I emailed uh, Energizer, and they were cool with this. So you have six different battery protection um, on this. Battery management system can protect your devices in six different areas. Uh, this device as well: overcharge, overcurrent, short circuit, thermal, over discharge, and over voltage. In other words, if I plug 600 watts of solar panels into this thing, it's going to blow it up. Not this one. It'll, it'll give you an error code and tell you that it's over, over voltage. Um, over discharge, you don't want to, of course, kill the battery completely. You don't want to knock it out. So when it gets to a certain level, I believe it's 10.4 uh, volts, it will shut watts. It will shut off. So definitely cool little system. whole lot of protections built in. Now, this is an interesting little system. I like to, I like, this is a detail I like to find out about any solar, um, solar generator or power station, however you want to call it. Um, how long will it run with no load? 
because I've seen a lot of people errantly plug something in that is an intermittent load drawer, and then the power station, of course, shuts off because there's no load. So then they think, oh, this thing's defective, it's junk, it's no good. Uh, case in point for that is refrigerators. Refrigerators run for a while, but then they shut off, and they just keep things cool inside. That's why they're so well insulated. They're not running 24-7. So when you have a situation like that, and you have your refrigerator shut off, well, naturally, if, if a power station has a cutoff, it'll just say, all right, there's nothing being drawn on me. Might as well save the batteries and shut off. That's why I like to find that out. This one will continue to output for six hours. Then it will start to detect a load or no load. Okay? If no load's detected within 30 minutes, the output will be turned off. So that's really cool for you folks with refrigerators that want to run on these energizers. Um, they will check for a load for six hours. They won't look for a load. They'll just output. So even if you're not drawing, if I have my, let's say my refrigerator, small refrigerator plugged in here, okay, and for six hours nothing's going on, well, the cool part about it is this will still stay on. So when that freezer or refrigerator kicks on, this is ready to go. That is a really handy feature, especially for these. Now some people may say, well, if nothing's being drawn on it, why leave it running? It's wasteful. But you're not drawing any current. So right now with this thing running, it's drawing two watts. I mean, that's not going to kill your battery or do any kind of major damage. So I really can't complain about it. Um, I really like that feature. That is something that I find very, very handy. Um, something that has a little bit of time in it that won't shut off 10 minutes after there's no load on it. And that's very, very important for you folks running it on intermittent devices, freezers, refrigerators, freezers especially. My freezer over there probably turns on once a day. So six hours may be a little short. But again, there's a way around that. If you have that situation, you can also plug another load into this, so it's constantly getting a load. I mean, it's not too hard to put an adapter on here and have two plugs, and maybe plug in a light bulb, and then plug in your freezer. The light bulb's always going to be on, and it's not going to draw a ton, of, a ton of wattage, but the freezer may shut off. In that case, when it turns back on, the light bulb is keeping the load alive. So, I really do like that. So, fully charged, they say to check it every three months or so, make sure it's uh, topped off. They say, again, I'm going to do this in Celsius because that's what I have in front of me, sorry. Uh, keep it between 20 Celsius and 40 Celsius. Keep your portable power station away from heat, direct sunlight, or any kind of heat source to extend its lifespan. One of the things that the, um, we're going to use the panel they sent me for the 300 watt to charge this up today when, after we test it out. One of the things that I did mention on that is it has a very short cable, but it stays very cool behind your panels. If you put your panels out at a slant, this will stay cool right behind it. So, let's try it out with some devices. I'm going to try my hammer drill on it. I'm going to try some other stuff on it. I want to see, um, I mean, obviously I know this stuff works. We'll try it quickly. But I want to see how well it does work. So, let's get some stuff on here and check it out. Alright, so we're going to start off with the hammer drill. This is kind of a smaller load, but I want to see what kind of wattage it draws. We've used it before. I love the fact that it displays the wattage used. Um, some of these other units don't have that, and it's kind of hard to tell what you're drawing. So we got, a, we got a steady 251 there. I did see a spike in the beginning of 450 something. Um, you can rewind the video and check that out. So you did get a steady, um, a steady uh, about 251 watts. No problem at all with that. Started right up. Didn't give me any kind of problem. So let's try it out now over on my mini fridge and see if it needs it's drawing anything. If it's not, we'll try it on something else. Uh, the mini fridge might be cold enough already. So. That's why I said they do cycle on and off. So we'll try something else if that's the case, but let's give it a shot. All right, on the top, you've seen my ice machine. We did a review on that. On the bottom is the mini fridge. I'm going to push you down a little bit so you can see it. I do have it open right now because I want to get it, you know, to the point where it has to kick on. When I first plugged it in over here, just testing it, it pulled about 458 watts, but then it shut right off because it was done. It was cold enough. So I'm keeping it open for a few minutes and testing it out. This is the setup we have here. There's the power station up top. So we're going to give it a few minutes. We're going to let it uh, drain. And then we're going to turn it back on and see how much it drains. All right, we're at about 107. It has kicked in. When I did plug it in, and I want to tell you, this handled it. It spiked to 725. It handled the spike on it. But as you can see, it's doing about 100 and 106, 103. Um, I do hear the compressor kicked on a few minutes ago. So it is doing its job. And it did handle that big spike when it kicked on. Um, keeping it open like that, let me kind of kick down here and close the close the door. 
Um, keeping it open like that did make it get cold enough where it had to just punch right on, and it did. It punched on, went to about 725, really quick, and as you can tell now that I've closed the door, the drain is a little bit lower. But uh, yeah, it definitely powers the mini fridge, so I have no problem with that. As you can tell, the mini fridge on the bottom there is what we are plugged into. Oh, I didn't close it all the way. Let's fix that. <laughs> there you go. So it's done on the bottom, and it's still kicking butt. It's still doing 99 watts. Not a huge test, again, but it is able to power that. Now let's try something else. Um, over to the right here, that yellow old looking thing there, is my um, swamp cooler for inside the garage here. Being that it's cold now, but it's going to start getting hot, I want to give that a try and see how well that machine will handle it. So let me set that up. All right, so I don't have water in here yet. I'm not really going to run it for that too long, but I do want to show you um, how this works. If you've never used a swamp cooler, basically you fill them with cold water. It wets the pad in back. It draws the air in and it kind of humidifies the room and cools things off with the cold water. I like to stick ice cubes in mine along with the water. Anyway, this guy here, and this is a rather larger unit, um, usually isn't much of a draw. I am going to move it up one, though, because it's on two, and I want to put it on three to see what we can get out of it. So let's give it a shot here. I'm plugging it into the power station over here. All right, move that that way for you so you can actually see. And I had it on, so it's ready to go. Okay, we were at 128, 119, 102. You see it handles that fine. I'm going to move you into the camera. I mean into the uh, power station area, so you can see. So it's definitely handling that load. No problem at all. This does draw a bit more current than most uh, swamp coolers because it's really, really big. <laughs> but it definitely cools you off. All right, let's try something else. All right, so I've had the freezer unplugged for about mm, 15 minutes or so. Just enough so it kicks on. Um, I have the power station sitting on an old metal coffee can. And by the way, if you can find those old metal coffee cans, save them. They make awesome hobo stoves. All right, let's uh, plug this puppy in here and see what we got. 355, 482, 101, 96. See, it would drop right back down. But you did get that initial pump on it when you saw the 400s, and it took it fine. Again, these things do, do have a decent amount of overhead on them. So if you do push it a little bit, it will, you know, that initial surge will be just fine. And as you can see, I got, you know, that running, battery's still at 98 after all we've tested. The thing is running at 83 watts. you got a good long time for that to, uh, to run in an emergency. And here's the cool part. No generators, no power cords, no going filling up the gas, changing the oil in the generator. No even me walking to the other side of the room, plugging in an extension cord into my solar into my inverters and bringing it over here. I just throw this thing here. For short-term power outage, that's awesome. For long-term, it's even better because when it dies, I can recharge it with the sun and I don't have to rely on wall power. All right, let's try out some of the USB stuff and see, uh, see how we're doing with that. And I'll also try the cigarette lighter adapter. We'll see how it's doing. All right, so I got some things down on the counter here at your USB rechargeable. We're going to put them all in together. But the first thing I want to do is I have this little power bank here, and I reviewed this years ago. Um, this is a little power bank that also has some solar panels on it. Great for your cell phone or whatever. Even with all these panels, it would still take quite a while to recharge this panel, this bank. I believe it's a 20,000, a 25,000 milliamp hour bank. We're going to plug it into the USB 2, the 2, point, the two amp uh, 5 volt plug. That's the faster of the two. And I'm going to use this USB digital tester. I'm going to give you a close up and let you see the numbers on what it's putting out into this. So we're going to zoom the camera in and bring you right over here. And show you what it's doing all right so there you go it is charging it up 4.91 volts 1.07 amps definitely doing its job and i wanted to just show you what it's doing from all these now we're going to try it in the other one up top i hope this stays in camera please stay in camera here we go all right and you can still see that one doing the exact same thing and that's all this can charge at. This, you know, this, the, uh, the power bank here isn't uh, set to charge higher than one amp. So that's fine. It's doing its job. I just wanted to make sure that was all doing what it was supposed to do. And uh, got to say, so far, I'm pretty impressed. All right, let's plug everything in and see how it handles it. Right now it's drawing 8 watts just charging this. So let's plug everything in and see how it works. All right, so I have a, uh, a 440 uh, radio over here charging up. And I have the power bank charging up. And I have something unique to try out here. This is a Cobb LED light um, climate blow-up light. Basically, you blow some air into this, 
and inflate it and just hang it from your tent or camp or whatever. And it just plugs in off USB, so it's going to be kind of bright. I want to make sure I don't wipe the camera out when I do it. There we go. There, see? <laughs> so you get the idea. All right, we're drawing 10 watts, 98% on the battery. Still very, very full, no problems at all. So I'm definitely impressed with this little unit. Um, like I said, it's been powering my two studio. I have two big ring lights on either side here of the, of the thing and one big light up top. And it's been powering them for like the last four or five videos. So um, it never got below 96 or so. And I just recharged it with the wall plug, the wall uh, charger. And I'm going to show you what it comes with in a sec. And then we're going to take it outside, put the panel out, and see how long it takes to go up to, say, one level. So let me get the stuff and the accessories out and show you what it comes with. All right, let's talk about the accessories it comes with. Now, first off, you're going to notice these strange little plugs here. These will plug into proper solar connectors. I forget what the name is on them, what they're called. Um, I even had them written down, and I forgot to bring the paper out. But these will plug into solar panel connectors. So if you have a solar panel with the proper connectors on it, you have a negative and a positive right there, and it just goes right into your input, like that. Now, they are short because the panel coming off your solar panel, the, power, the wire coming off your solar panel should be a whole lot longer. This is, of course, your DC wall power plug. It does come in two pieces, and as you can tell, I haven't even unwrapped it. Literally, I just turned this thing around, plugged it in here, charged it up, and, you know, by the time I came back out to clean up my mess, it was full. So it does charge very, very quickly. That is a nice feature of that. Um, the next up over here is your USB-C plug. So if you have devices, the plug via USB-C, and this is an in or out, your PD60 watt, so you can charge in or out from there. Um, that's your connector for that. And lastly, your car cigarette lighter plug that will charge from your car cigarette lighter or car power adapter, however you want to call it. Um, again, I tell people when you are using these, okay, in your vehicle or when you're charging these in your vehicle, make sure your vehicle is running. Um, let's say you're at one camp spot for a night and you're moving to another one and it's 20 minutes away. Sure, yeah, plug it in while you're driving there. Once you park, unplug it. You'll kill your battery. You don't want to leave these plugged in with the battery running constantly. One of the nice features on that freezer that I recently showed you was the fact that you could set the freezer so when it detected the car battery at a certain voltage, it shut off and stopped taking power in. This won't do that. This will drain your battery. <laughs> All of them will. So you got to be careful when doing that. All right, that's the accessories. Now, let's take it outside. Now, I do have the panel that I was sent with the previous um, video for the 300-watt one, and it's the same 100-watt panel you'll get if you order with it. It is extra, but let's set it up and see how well that works. We have some decent sun. It is windy and cold out there, so there'll be a little bit of dust blocking the sun. But let's see how well it does and how much sun we can get in on it. All right, so this is the setup out here. I have the 100-watt panel out like that. I have the power station behind it, and it is remarkably cooler behind that. Um, I think for this panel, I would probably get an extension cord, you know, a, a female 5.5 millimeter plug to a male that, you know, 5, 10 feet. I've always liked to keep my equipment cool, and I can think, you know, for today, that's fine, but on a hot summer day when it's 115 out, that unit's going to get a little too hot for my liking. It's probably fine, but it would probably get a little too hot for the way I like it. So, let's move down there, move up close, want to show you what it looks like up close and personal and uh, we'll plug it in and see how it goes I'm gonna put away some stuff here we'll let it run for a little while and see how long it takes to uh, move up a little bit on the meter alright so let's plug this puppy in and get it rolling alright now it will show low watts in the beginning it goes to like 8 watts and I was like uh oh what's going on <laughs> and then it'll bump up I'm gonna zoom you in Okay, zoom you in there to show you we're getting about Again, it's really hard to see, but you're getting about 63, 70. I added up to 84 when I first tested it the first time. Um, so you're getting a decent amount of wattage. There's 83 there, 81. You're getting a decent amount of uh, wattage in on that. So we're going to let that run for a while and uh, come back out and see how far it goes. From 98, can we get it up to 100? Um, I just have to put away a few things, and uh, we'll see how it works. All right, so in literally five minutes... Not even, really. I just put away some of that USB stuff I was showing you. It's gone from 98 to 99. So, definitely, the panel is doing its job. Definitely pleased with it. Very, very happy with it. Let's get it inside, pack up everything out here, and finish up the video. I'll give you the price on it, because it is a very good deal. 
Um, for a 600 watt power station, this is fairly budget friendly. So let's uh, unpack everything here, get it inside, and we'll finish up. All right, so we're back inside, and I will turn it back on so you can see it is at 99%. So it definitely did its job. I mean, that was within five minutes. Now, did I give it the biggest workout? No, but I've had this thing pretty low using these lights out here. And I have run it off of a bunch of different stuff that I plugged into it. But your main goal with these is something like that would keep a freezer going, or would keep your TV on, or maybe keep your radios running, or whatever, so you can stay informed, or keep your food store safe, or whatever. It might even give you a cooling option, like we did with the uh, swamp cooler. Uh, I don't know that it would run an air conditioner. It probably would run the fan on the air conditioner, but it wouldn't run the compressor. So you got to be careful with these things, and that's why I like to test them with some heavy-duty stuff as well as the simple stuff. I see some people, you know, especially on the Amazon reviews, they plug their cell phone and go, oh, yeah, it works great. Well, that doesn't really tell you much if you got to plug your freezer into it. So that's why I like doing it. So let's give you a little bit of stats on this and the price, too. The price for a 600-watt unit is a pretty good deal right now. They're $399. Now, I know some people will see that and go, whoa, that's crazy. But most 600-watt units, it's still around a dollar a watt, and you'd be paying about $700, $600, $700, for one of these. So the brand name, you know, you know Energizer. You know they make good stuff. That going for it, as well as the price, is a pretty darn good deal. $3.99, you can get the panel for a little extra. I am going to put a link to this down in my uh, description. So I, I always get people saying, where can I buy it? Well, I always put the link in the description, no matter where the product's located. So you can get it down in the description there. You can pick it up. Uh, a little bit of last-minute stats here. It's about 12 pounds. The dimensions on it, 10.2 by 6.8 across by 7.9 inches tall. So it's very small, can be carried around, easy to carry around. Again, you've got a bunch of ways to charge it. 600 watts, I believe the head on it is around, the, the head end is about uh, 800 or 850 watts, I believe, yeah. So you will not damage it in any way, shape, or form. You saw my other thing took it up to uh, 745 without a problem. But it's that initial spike. When you plug in devices, sometimes they're going to spike up to get started, and then they'll come down and be mellow. So I think you'll really appreciate it. I think you'll like the product. Um, I'm definitely going to be using it out here again for my lights, uh, you know, it's a very handy device to have for that. It's also handy to have out here in case I do lose power in the middle of shooting a video. Heck, I can keep going. I can charge my camera off it, anything I want. So I definitely like the item. I'm really pleased with it so far. And uh, we'll uh, let you check it out and decide for yourself. Again, with the world we're living in where things are really uncertain and there's always talk of EMPs or hacking grids, hacking power grids, whatever, Having a device like this, even 600 watts, doesn't have to be 2,000 1, watts or something. Even 600 watts is a huge benefit as a prepper. Um, definitely something small enough that you could tuck it in a closet, take it out every three months, test it, see, to see if it's still 100%. Um, you know, I, I have it at 99 here, and I'll tell you right now, when I shut off this camera, I'm going to charge it to 100. You know, it's just I keep everything ready at all times, so I'm going to keep it charged up, but... Yeah, it's a good idea to keep it uh, topped off. Um, some some units will stay longer, and I think with the uh, with the uh, the batteries this uses, they'll probably stay a whole lot longer than three months. But it's still a good idea to take it out, check it, even if you just hit the button and go, oh, 99%, okay, it's cool. You know, it's a good idea to do that every uh, every three months. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Link will be down below for this. Below that's my Amazon affiliate store. You can check out that store. Usually, everything that I review that's on Amazon, I will put in that store for you to look at. Um, you know, if you find it cheaper, by all means, buy it somewhere else. But the reason I do it is because sometimes, like, I'll forget. Let's, let's say I forgot the weight on this. Well, you can go there and look it up, you know. Um, I try to put all the details in, but sometimes I forget things. Boy, do I know it when people ask the same question over and over again. Uh, below that is our freeze-dried wholesalers link. If you guys are thinking about getting stocked up on emergency food, now is the time. Sadly, he's going to have to raise his prices. Uh, pretty soon and he has everything in stock so you're going to be good with the stock you know he's prepared for this I think March 2020 taught him a lesson and he said he wanted to make sure that anything that happened in the future he was ready for so he has the stock he has the food and he literally has the stock in freezers ready to freeze dry it if need be so check him out there my link will save you 15 percent so it's kind of a bit of an inflation fighter right there by clicking that link you'll save 15 percent Below that is My Patriot Supply. We have an amazing deal this month on My Patriot Supply. You're getting the four-week kit for $50 off, okay? That stuff is really easy to use. 
Again, there's a difference between dehydrated and freeze-dried. And um, if you guys check out Sunshine State Survival site, she, uh, she did a very good video on that the other day. Um, there is a difference, and that is, de that is um, dehydrated, not freeze-dried. But it is a good way to get yourself a whole lot of food very, very quickly in a hurry if you're worried about things happening quickly. Um, you know, you can order it, get the discount, and have it shipped right to your door. It's a good start, you know, to your, to your food storage. Uh, that's preparewithiridium.com. Preparewithiridium.com. That's only on my site. So if you want to check out the deal, check it out. And below that, Thrive Life freeze-dried food. Check them out there as well as our Jace Medical. Um, if you're interested in getting some antibiotics prescribed to you by American doctors after a consultation, legit emergency antibiotics with an instruction manual on how to use it, Check them out too. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.